Today and tomorrow, Thursday and Friday, July 4th and 5th, the Winnipeg Public Library, in collaboration with the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra, is inviting children ages 6 to 12 to move to the beat, discover new rhythms, and have fun with silly noises. Probably the last thing you would expect to hear in the quiet space of a library are percussion instruments, but that is exactly what the library is inviting children to experience. Today at Sir William Stevenson Library and tomorrow at the Transcona Library and the Bill and Helen Norrie Library, an event called Percussion in the Library will be taking place. Presented by Manitoba Chamber Orchestra Principal Percussionist Victoria Sparks, this is sure to be an engaging way to get children moving and having fun through sounds and rhythm. And joining me here in the Classic 107 studio to talk about percussion in the library, I am joined by Victoria Sparks. Hey, Tori. Hi, Great Chris. to see you. Good to see you, too. Mm. Nice to be here. Yeah. Before we get uh, to percussion in the library, it has been a long time since I've seen you. I got to ask, uh, aside from being the principal percussionist with the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra, you're also the percussion teacher at the University of Manitoba's Diesel Tell Faculty of Music. How did the year go and how is the new auditorium? Oh, we're very excited. It's opening up in the fall and we can't wait to have our own students performing and to welcome the community to our campus. We're, we're so, so excited about it. And, uh, and the teaching year was good? It's been great. It's always wonderful. Actually, it's great that you mentioned that because uh, that's part of this program is that actually it was developed by a former student of mine uh, who's actually pursuing music education and is really interested in working with children. Um, and when the chamber orchestra said we want to develop a percussion idea, I said you got to call Sage. So Sage Stoyanowski, a former student of mine, actually developed the program, and then I've been working with her to help her to help her grow it. So it's been really exciting. Perfect, perfect, perfect. It's nice perfect. when all my worlds collide. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it leads great to the next question. I was going to say, how did this project come about? Did you approach the library? Did the library approach you? Actually, the MCO is kind of the spearhead of the whole mm -hmm. thing. They've been running all, all kinds of outreach programs for lots of years, um, but it's typically been a string ensemble that goes out. And so they said, well, we've got other musicians that could work with us all the time, and we want to kind of feature some of the other sections of the orchestra. Um, in, in some of the outreach programs that we're doing and we thought maybe percussion might be a lot of fun. I love that you said silly noises because that's, you know, sometimes what we do is, is all kinds of silly noises and we're so lucky to get to do that. <laughs> <laughs> How is the presentation laid out? Is it part performance, part demonstration? Can you talk about talk us through the forty five minutes? What kinds of things uh, can kids and their families accept, uh, Abs expect? Absolutely, it's uh, it's a kind of meant to be a little bit interactive, a little bit of a learning, a little bit of kind of what does it mean to be a percussion instrument? What is a percussion instrument? How do we create groove? How do we create rhythms and sounds? So some of it is activity based, where you have an, where you, where you get an instrument or a pair of sticks of some kind and learn a pattern. Some of it is about body percussion and all the sounds we can make without any instruments at all um, and because it's the library the final presentation is a story so we've actually taken a story and developed some music to go with it and some sound effects and ideas it's about a little lightning bug who has to live in a storm so there's all kinds of great opportunities for sound effects there um, so it's a little bit of a mix of you know you get to get up on your feet and move a little bit you get to play some some different instruments and also you get to hear a story told with some great sound effects oh, that's going to be fantastic uh, I know one of the things you love doing is going out and discovering new percussion sounds. I know you like to go out to various weird places and find interesting sounds. Uh, can you talk about what kinds of instruments you're going to be bringing to the presentation and what kinds of things uh, students will be able to take part in? Yeah, we're bringing all kinds of fun things. We've got some of the standard things, you know, a cymbal, a triangle, some of the instruments you might actually see with the orchestra. We've got a few other fun things, one thing called a thunder tube. It's a neat tube with a metal spoon spool hanging out of it when you shake it it sounds like a thunderstorm so that's very exciting <laughs> we also have a full set of chromatic desk bells so you know that you go up to a desk and you ding you ring the bell well we have a set a full octave of every chromatic tone so we actually sage is playing little melodies and tunes on all these little desk bells so they're kind of whimsical a little bit fun that's awesome yeah so we're trying to bring the lightheartedness to to the show <laughs> <laughs> uh the event is advertised as kids getting a chance to have fun with silly noises. Uh, what are some of the silly noises that they're going to hear? Oh, uh, we've got some um, whistles and bird call type sounds. Um, and we've got, um, oh man, I'm going to have to remember here. Um, a few found things, just some like some like chains and rocks and gravel to kind of make some of the, the naturey types of sounds. 
Um, and I've got to try to remember what else is on the, sta- on the table. We've got two big trays just full of all kinds of little toys. Um, so that's always the fun part, too, is when the show's over, the kids love to come up and take a look at all the little bits and pieces um, that, we, that we bring with them. We'll have to leave a few surprises. And are they going to play? Are they going to be have an opportunity to play some of those little pieces, like maybe at the end? or um, Actually, play? even throughout the, the show in the first half, we've got a couple of activities where we've got sticks and we've got shakers and things that, we, that every, everybody gets passed out and everybody gets to have a, a role in the first part of the show so that everybody gets to... Get, you, every, there, everybody who's there is part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, are you going to be teaching rhythms by rote to children? And how do you expect the interaction with the children to go? What's that going to look like? Yeah, typically by rote. For in, a, in an experience this quick and this tur- this much of a turnaround, um, and especially when we come in, some students probably have some experience with, with music education, but some might not. Um, and that's okay. Um, you know, Most of us can kind of follow along by imitating something that we heard much faster than we can look at something written down. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's one of the ways that we can kind of make sure that everybody can get involved right away. Um, so it's definitely accessible to anyone, no matter matter kind of what your experiences have been with music throughout the throughout your life <laughs> we, we even get the parents and grandparents involved <laughs> oh, that's excellent <laughs> no one's immune <laughs> excellent um i find kids they're innately musical they're either singing or they're very they're stamping their feet in rhythm um what are you expecting the kids to be doing uh or do you or do you know like or what are you expecting? You know, you get all the way across the board. You get some who are really shy and you, you put something in their hand and they just kind of want to hold it and just want to just kind of sit and listen to the sounds and be in the middle of it. And you get others who at some point you might have to take the sticks back <laughs> because they, they're maybe having a little bit too much fun. No, there's no such thing. Um, so, yeah, you kind of get the whole spectrum. But you're right. Students uh, and like young young children are just innately kind of drawn to sound and to music. And percussion is such an easy way in because mm-hmm. you just take the thing and you hit the thing or you tap the thing or shake the thing or scrape the thing and it makes a sound right away. Um, you know, with the, the strings and the brass, you, you need you need some training. You need to be a little older and stronger to blow enough air through those instruments. Whereas percussion, you you can just put it in their hands and they can hit it. Um, so it's a really quick way to be participating in music yourself um, with without, especially on such a short, you know, 45 minutes is a quick time. Mm. And yet the students are moving to the music, are playing some music, are listening to music. They're interacting in multiple ways in just a really short window. Perfect. Uh, What do you hope uh, children and their families are going to take away from percussion in the libraries? I hope that they learn the fa- my favorite thing, which is that a percussion instrument is is defined pretty simply, uh, defined as anything that you can strike, anything you can shake, or anything you can scrape. And so if you're making some noise with it, it's a percussion instrument. Um, and that's kind of the, the joy of my life is, is, you know, sometimes I get to play really big, fancy concert instruments, and other times I get to play flower pots that I got at the dollar store. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and if you're, if you're, saying something interesting if you're saying something funny if you're saying something beautiful with your sounds you're 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 performing you're you're being a musician yeah. um, and that's accessible to everybody and that's one of my favorite things about percussion in general absolutely uh, so there's three presentations uh, percussion in the library the first happens today Thursday July 4th at 2 p.m. at Sir William Stevenson Library and then the other two happen tomorrow Friday at the Transcona Library that one's at 10:30 and in the morning and then you've got the one at the Bill and Helen Norrie Library at 2 p.m. Where can people go to register for the event? I believe to those libraries specific websites. So there's a, yeah, each library has a website for the activities going on. And so that's how they're tracking to make sure that there's only so many, you know, so much space in the, in the rooms that they have. So we want to make sure we have enough room for everybody um, or make sure that we, that we have enough space to, to run the program. Mm. And for our Classic 107 listeners, I've embedded a direct link to the registration page where you can find out more details. You can find that by going to classic107.com and clicking on the article. Fantastic. Tori, this has been so great to see you again and catch up. The percussion in the libraries that is happening over the next couple of days sound just excellent. Thanks for taking the time to come by and talk to me today. This is really, really wonderful. Great to see you, Chris.